Hi friends, did you watch the javelin throw at this Olympics? I watched it live and it was amazing to see Neeraj Chopra win the gold medal for India. While watching the event, I was thinking at what speed did he throw the javelin to win the gold medal? What is the physics behind javelin throw? So I thought I must make a video on this topic. In this video, we are going to discuss the physics behind javelin throw and we'll estimate at what speed did Neeraj Chopra throw the javelin to win the gold medal at this Olympics. We look at projectile motion and discuss all that interesting stuff. I'm going to make the concepts really easy for you. So make sure you watch the entire video. And before I begin, I just want to say, do remember to like and share this video with your friends and make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. And also do check out our Manocha Academy app and also our website manochaacademy.com for more courses on physics, chemistry, biology, maths and computers. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's get started. Before we begin, first let's look at some interesting facts about Neeraj Chopra winning this gold medal. Neeraj Chopra is the first track and field athlete to win an Olympic gold medal for India. He won the gold medal in the javelin throw with an amazing throw of 87.58 meters. At the age of 23, he's the youngest ever Indian gold medalist in an individual event. And did you know that this was his Olympic debut? This was his first Olympics and it's amazing he won the gold medal. It's a really inspirational story. Now friends, let's look at the physics behind javelin throw and let's see what is the physics that we can learn from our everyday life. So when the athlete throws the javelin, as you've seen in the event, they run at a great speed. Why? So that they are gaining momentum, right? And they can throw the javelin with that momentum. And they're applying a huge force to throw the javelin at a very high speed so that it travels a long distance. Now, can you tell me what is the type of motion for the javelin? So when the javelin flies off and lands on the ground, what type of motion do we call it? That's right. The correct answer is projectile motion. The javelin follows this kind of path, right? As you have seen, it will follow a curved path like this. And this shape is known as a parabola. So the javelin is not moving simply in a straight line. It's following a parabolic path. And as you can see, this is two dimensional motion because the javelin is moving along the X axis here and along the Y axis. That means you can see that the javelin will have some horizontal displacement and it also has some vertical motion, right? It rises up and then falls down. So this is a two dimensional motion, which is happening in this, if we call this a two dimensional plane, right? It's along the X and Y axis. And this is called projectile motion because it's happening under gravity. There is constantly gravitational pull pulling the javelin down as it travels along this path, right? The force of gravity is continuously going to pull the javelin down and we call this projectile motion. And now the golden question, at what speed did Neera Chopra throw the javelin to win the gold medal for India? So if you saw the event in his second attempt, he did an amazing javelin throw and covered a range of 87.58 meters, which won him the gold medal. So now can we estimate at what speed did he throw that javelin to cover this huge range of 87.58 meters? So it's very simple. I'm going to apply some physics and a little bit of maths here. I'm going to make it really easy. So let's take a look and estimate his speed here. Whenever we solve a physics problem, we always make some assumptions to simplify the problem. What are the assumptions that we can make here? So first thing, we are going to ignore air friction, right? So we won't consider any air friction on the javelin. The other assumption we'll make here is we'll ignore the height of the athlete. Okay, so we'll assume that the javelin was thrown from the ground level here, right? And it fell back to the ground. This level at which the javelin was thrown and where it lands are at the same horizontal level. 
and then of course we are going to assume that the javelin is a point object so we'll ignore its rotations and all so you can consider a javelin like a you know a ball which is following this projectile motion now let's see how these assumptions are going to help us and we can easily estimate the speed at which the javelin was thrown as we saw the projectile motion of the javelin is a two dimensional motion along the x or the horizontal axis and there's motion along the y or the vertical axis since it's a two dimensional motion it's very convenient to break it into a motion along the x axis so along the horizontal axis and motion along the y axis or the vertical axis and let me make you visualize this in a very interesting way so imagine you're watching this javelin throw at the olympics from two different places so two different views let's say you're standing here on the ground and watching the javelin throw and your friend is floating up in the air and watching the javelin throw from a top view so now think carefully if you're standing here and watching the javelin throw how will it look like to you what are you going to observe so because you're watching it from this level right you're going to see the javelin moving up and then moving down do you guys agree right so i'll repeat the javelin will look as if it's moving up and then it comes down so you can imagine it's going to look like a ball moving up and then coming down from this view okay so the motion is only going to be along the y axis or the vertical axis right but now your friend who's watching from top okay he's having like a bird's eye view of this what is he going to observe he's going to see that the javelin only moves along the horizontal axis or the x axis right so in both cases if you look carefully for you the motion is the javelin is moving in a straight line along the y axis and for your friend the motion is the javelin is moving in a straight line along the x axis so we've broken this complicated two dimensional motion into two motions straight line along the x axis for your friend and a straight line along the y axis for you the vertical axis right so keep this in mind because that's going to really help us solve this problem when the javelin is thrown by the athlete it is thrown with an initial speed right or an initial velocity let's denote that initial velocity with the symbol u and do you agree that the athlete throws it at an angle right because he's not throwing it horizontally or vertically he's throwing it at an angle with the ground so let's mark that angle as theta okay so we have a initial velocity and the angle theta with the ground now i want all of you to focus the attention and as if zoom in into this point where the athlete is throwing the javelin with an initial velocity and an angle to the ground so one very interesting simplification we can do here because again since the motion is at an angle to the ground let's see if we can break that velocity into an initial velocity along the x axis and an initial velocity along the y axis so what we are trying to do here is break down this initial velocity into an x component and a y component and it's really simple if you just draw a triangle here right so i want all of you to draw this triangle we can call it a p q and this is a right angle triangle right so we draw a perpendicular p q to the ground so we can see that we have a right angle triangle here a p q so the initial velocity is along the hypotenuse right you can see initial velocity is along the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle and if you consider this is the base and this is the perpendicular can you tell me what is the base and perpendicular going to be that's right so we can just apply some simple trigonometry here so we have a right angle triangle here with a 90 degree and this angle theta so what is the base going to be base is going to be u cos theta right because you know cos theta is base by hypotenuse so this vel velocity along the x axis or the x component the horizontal component of the velocity is going to be u cos theta and similarly the vertical component right is going to be u sin theta 
So what we've done is we have broken down our initial velocity of the javelin into a horizontal and vertical velocity, u cos theta, u sin theta. And this will really help us because now we can look at, you know, the motion along the x axis with this velocity, right? And along the y axis with the u sin theta velocity. So let's analyze the horizontal and vertical motions here. We have looked at the initial velocity along the x and y direction. Now let's talk about the acceleration in the x and y direction. So what is the acceleration for this projectile motion? We know that there is a force of gravity constantly pulling the javelin down and so we know that there is an acceleration due to gravity which we denote by the symbol g acting on the javelin all the time. So what is the acceleration along the x direction? That's right, the answer is zero because the acceleration is only along the y direction. So we can say that acceleration along the x direction is going to be zero. So what does that mean? The javelin is going to move with a constant horizontal velocity, right? Of course, we are ignoring air friction. So it's moving with a constant horizontal velocity because there's no acceleration in the x direction. Now, what about the y direction? What do you guys think? So clearly there is acceleration due to gravity along the y direction. So I'm going to say that a y is going to be, it's going to be related to this acceleration due to gravity, right? But since the initial velocity of the javelin is along the positive y axis, it's vertically upwards. And we know that acceleration due to gravity is vertically downwards. So it is causing a retardation, right? It is opposing the motion. So we denote it by minus g. The negative sign is very important because it is slowing the javelin down. It is actually a case of a retardation, right? So ax is zero and ay is minus g. And the value of g we can take as 9.8 meters per second square, the standard acceleration uh, due to gravity value. To find what is the distance traveled by the javelin, I need to know how much time was the javelin in air. Now remember, we can break the motion of the javelin into along the x-axis and y-axis. So let's see which component will help us to find how much time was the javelin in air. So remember, let's say you're looking at the javelin throw from this side. So you can see the motion of the javelin along the vertical axis, right? The javelin goes up and then comes down, right? And we know the javelin is going up from here to here. So let's mark this as point A, right? It goes all the way up here till point B, okay? And then it starts moving down and hits the ground at point C. So for half the time, the javelin was moving up and then the remaining half, it's moving down. So let's focus our attention on the motion of the javelin moving up. So if you're looking from here, it looks like the javelin is just going from A to B along the vertical axis. Now let's analyze the data there and see if we can find out this time from A to B. So first let's write down the data that we know. We know that what is the initial velocity along the y axis? That's right. It's going to be u sine theta. So I'm going to write the initial velocity u as u sine theta. That is the velocity at point A. Now, what is the velocity at point B here, right at the top? That's right. The correct answer is zero because if it had a non-zero velocity, it would move further up, right? Just for a moment, it's zero and then it starts moving down. So the final velocity at point B is zero. What is the acceleration along the y-axis? As we discussed earlier, the acceleration along the y-axis is minus g. So let's put that down here. A is minus g. And we are interested in finding the time from A to B. And then we can easily find the time from B to C. Since this is an accelerated motion, we can use equations of motion. So which equation are you guys going to use here? Come on, think and tell me. First equation, second equation, or third equation of motion? That's right. The correct answer is we're going to use the first equation of motion, V equal to U plus AT, because it has all the symbols we are interested in. 
So come on, use that equation and find t for me. We know v is 0, u along the vertical axis. Don't confuse it with this u. We are talking about along the vertical axis that is u sine theta. Acceleration is minus g and then we have time t. So what is the time t here? So t turns out to be u sine theta by g. And friends, this is the total time from A to B, the javelin moving up, right? The time from A to B. So what is going to be the total time from A to C? That's right, because it's a symmetric case, right? The time taken from A to B will be the same as the time taken from B to C. So the total time here is going to be 2 times this value, 2t, right? So we can say total time in air. So total time is going to be 2u sin theta divided by g. So we have found the total time of the javelin in terms of the initial velocity, the acceleration due to gravity and the angle. So we are going to use this expression later and estimate the initial velocity. Remember the speed with which Neeraj Chopra threw the javelin to win the gold medal, right? So we want to find that u. And we are going to use this total time to find that. All right. So use this expression and let's take a look. So how far will the javelin go? That is how far will it travel along the x-axis? And we call this the horizontal range of the projectile motion. So how do we find the horizontal range? It's really simple because remember we said the acceleration along the x-axis is zero. There is only acceleration due to gravity along the y-axis. So this is basically a case of constant velocity and to find this total distance here, right? Or this displacement along the x-axis, I just need to multiply the velocity with the time. So let's write that down. The displacement is going to be the horizontal velocity u cos theta multiplied by the total time here, multiplied by the total time, which I'm going to denote by capital T, right? And now let's go ahead and substitute the total time. We had found that expression. The total time is 2u sine theta by g. So we are going to plug it in here. So simple. The total displacement along the x-axis is going to be u cos theta multiplied by 2u sine theta by g. Now let's do some smart trigonometry here. So if you see this total displacement is u square 2 sine theta cos theta by g. I'm just rearranging the expression here, right? And this is what we have here. Now what is 2 sine theta cos theta? Do you guys know the trigonometry formula? That's right. It's going to be sine 2 theta. So let's substitute it here. So total displacement is going to be this 2 sine theta cos theta becomes sine 2 theta. So two, twice the angle, right, divided by g here. So friends, we have found how far will the javelin go in terms of the initial velocity, the angle and acceleration due to gravity here. We know the expression for horizontal distance, but now a very interesting question is what angle, right, will give us the maximum range here? So at what angle should the javelin be thrown to get the maximum range? What do you guys think? Again, some very simple trigonometry. You know the range is u square sine 2 theta by g. So if you focus on the angle part, what is the maximum value of sine of some angle? That's right. The maximum value of sine of any angle is 1. So when is this expression maximum? When sine 2 theta is 1. And when is sine 2 theta 1? When it is an angle of 90 degrees, right? Because you know 1 means we can say this is sine 90. Sine 90 degrees. So therefore we can say 2 theta is 90 degrees or the angle at which we'll get maximum range is 45 degrees. So simple, right? So 
ideally the javelin would be thrown here at 45 degrees but typically the athletes they throw at an angle less than 45 because we made some assumptions here you know regarding the air resistance and all of that so usually the athletes throw at an angle little less than 45 but we are going to assume here again for simplifications that the angle uh, because by our expression when will you get the maximum range at 45 degrees so let's say in the ideal scenario, Neera Chopra threw the javelin at an angle of 45 degrees. So now can we work out his initial speed, his initial velocity with which he threw the javelin. As we discussed, if we take this angle to be 45 degrees for maximum range, let us see what is the displacement that we get, right? What is the range that we get along the x-axis? So plugging in theta equal to 45 degree, we are going to get a displacement of u squared by g right because this entire term sine 2 theta term will become 1 so we can say that this displacement or how far the javelin will go along the x-axis is basically u squared divided by g here is that right so we have got a simple expression here for the range of the javelin and now we can easily answer our golden question what speed did Neera Chopra throw the javelin so we just have to plug in that horizontal range and equate it to the distance he traveled with his javelin throw of 87.58 meters. So let's go ahead and put S equal to U square by G. That is the expression we got, right? And that's equal to 87.58 meters. So come on friends, plug in these values and tell me what is the initial velocity you got what is the velocity with which he threw the javelin and we are going to substitute g as 9.8 meters per second square the average value and if you google this the value in tokyo in japan is very close to 9.8 meters per second square i even checked that so go ahead and plug in these values and what are you going to get here so we are going to get u square equals 87.58 multiplied by 9.8 we are all in si units so all good here and you just have to take a you have to multiply these values and take a square root of that and if you calculate you're going to get u the initial velocity as 29.3 meters per second so this is the speed at which he threw the javelin at u equal to 29.30 meters per second this is really really fast do you know how fast it is i think it'll be easier to convert it to kilometers per hour because you know we are more used to kilometers per hour uh, in terms of speed of vehicle speed of a car so let's convert this meters per second into kilometers per hour and see how fast that javelin went you can easily convert meters per second to kilometers per hour simply by multiplying by 18 by 5 right so this is the magic way to convert it and now if you do this conversion you're going to get approximately a value of 105 kilometers per hour oh my god isn't that amazing he threw the javelin with a velocity over 100 kilometers per hour our estimate is 105 kilometers per hour that's you know like a car traveling on a highway really really fast 105 kilometers per hour is what we've estimated the speed at which Neeraj Chopra threw the javelin to cover 87.58 meters and create history at the Tokyo Olympics. So wasn't that simple? We just applied some physics and mathematics and we've estimated his speed here. Some of you might be thinking that is it really possible to throw the javelin really fast? Uh, is our answer, is our estimate correct? So I encourage you to Google the answer, right? So you can Google what is the speed at which javelin throwers typically throw the javelin, uh, that is the expert throwers who are participating in Olympics. And here's the Google result. You can see it says that elite throwers, the expert throwers, they release the javelin at 28 to 30 meters per second. 
around 100 kilometers per hour. So our answer is pretty accurate. Our estimate is pretty accurate. You can see we've confirmed it with the Google result of speed of javelin throw and you guys can check it. So we are confident that our answer is fairly close. Of course, it's an estimate with all the assumptions that we use there and it's fairly close to what we expected here. Friends, I hope you enjoyed this Olympic special video where we looked at the physics behind javelin throw and we really learned physics from our daily lives. So even the sports people, they're applying all this physics to get the maximum range here and we estimated the speed of the javelin throw. And if you like this video, do hit the like button right now and please do share it out with your friends. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And do check out our new Manocha Academy Android app and our website manochaacademy.com because we have full courses on physics, chemistry, biology and maths for CBSC class 8, 9 and 10. We also have full courses for physics, chemistry and maths for ICSE class 8, 9 and 10. And if you want to learn coding from me, we have Python coding, we have Java coding, and we have physics and chemistry for the Cambridge IGCSE board. So I'll put the link to our app and website in the links below. Do check it out because in these courses, you'll get live classes, concept videos, quizzes, questions, mock test notes, and all the good stuff. So do check out the links below and do share out our app and website with your friends. Hope you guys enjoyed this Olympics video. Thanks for watching.